uh, rapid increase of China's foreign trade uh, is, is uh, remarkable. And uh, you can see China's foreign trade and surplus, trade surplus, after 2000, the year 2000 is increasing quite big. And our surplus in the year 2008, our trade surplus uh, comes to a peak. Uh, but uh, if during the financial crisis there was a big shock of China's economy by reduction of foreign demand in the year 2009 our GDP growth was 9.2% investment in contributed 8.7% uh, consumption contributed 4% and uh, foreign trade contributed minus 3.5% so that means it was really a big shock of, to China's economy and on the other hand the deleverage of developed countries during the financial crisis caused the capacity of China so China should change its development pattern, re relying more on domestic consumption. But it's not an easy job. Why? Because we need to raise people's purchasing power. It's a must. Otherwise, you cannot rely more on domestic consumption. So we need to raise people's purchasing power. That means we need to raise people's income and we need to uh, reduce taxes, personal taxes, and so on, and uh, promoting the uh, <coughs> credit uh, consumption. At this time being, the personal uh, loan in our uh, total loan is only 15%, not six, as the Western countries, 60 to 70%. So we need to also to promote credit consumption. And this is a, a chart for the disposable income growth rate of China's rural urban residents. So that means we need to increase the, the income and synchronize with the economic growth so we can rely more on domestic consumption. <coughs> and this is uh, the ratio of total imports and exports uh, and the ratio balance to GDP, China versus the United States. <coughs> and the third is financial innovation versus supervision. Financial innovation is a double-bladed sword. And uh, over speculation should be prevented by financial supervision. So they are mutually constrained and uh, promoted. You must be very familiar with this. The financial innovation started from the uh, euro dollar, right? but uh, after that, uh, financial innovation is growing quite very fast. And uh, the uh, financial supervision, supervision is. <coughs> left behind of the innovation. So it's also the one reason to cause the, the uh, subprime crisis in the United States. But in China, the financial innovation is not so uh, mature. So we should encourage financial innovation and improve our financial supervision. Uh, I said supervision should be legal, reasonable, adequate, and effective. But uh, transparency is most important. So now we are trying to increase the transparency in our financial supervision. Oh, I'm sorry. The fourth issue is a fictitious economy versus real economy. The fictitious economy is the term we use. Uh, actually, it's opposite to real economy. Uh, in short, it means to generate money directly from money. 
uh, maybe you may argue this. Why you call it fictitious? Uh, in China, in Chinese, the Xu Ni, we translate it to fictitious, but it is a little different. In Chinese, Xu Ni is a neutral word. And uh, in uh, English, fictitious is a negative word, right? So that's why I saw some people surprised <laughs> for this. So maybe you can say it's a non real economy. That's opposite of the reason, real economy. Okay. And uh, uh, for example, when you lend your money to others, or you bought, you, you bought a bond or a stock, you lost the right of usage of your money, but you still keep the right of ownership of, of your money, right? So that you can claim the interest, you can claim the interest of bond, you can claim, claim you know, the, the, the interest. But your own right of ownership is guaranteed by the credit system. If the credit system is broken, your right of ownership is nothing. Right? So that's what happened in the financial crisis and also what happened in Greece in the, in the European debt crisis. Right? So that's why we mean it's a fictitious. Your a bond or a stock is only a paper. And then this time, because of electronic transaction, even without any paper. So if the credit system is broken, your own your right of ownership is not guaranteed. So that's why we call it fictitious. One is uh, <coughs> the market value of the stock market. Uh, second is the remaining of funds. Third is the no, uh, outstanding of uh, the financial activities. So the, you can see the negative and fictitious economy is now around over, uh, is around, uh, oh, is around seven, 700 trillion uh, US dollars. There is 700 trillion US dollars. And the world GDP is around the six, is a little over 16 trillion US dollars. So it has a big difference. And in China, you can see the fictitious economy, magnitude of the fictitious economy, is close to real economy. Only the highest number is only 1.6. I think that's a reason why China has less impact by the financial crisis because we don't have so many toxic assets. But on the other hand, the, because China's fictitious economy is not so well advanced, so what we can do is using our huge uh, foreign exchange reserve Email. to buy the American bonds. Uh, that's actually that means we lend our money to the American investors. And uh, according to my knowledge, the investment investment return in the United States is around eight percent, and then the bond interest is around four percent. So that means we. Or to our man, we lend our money to the American investors that they make money and just pay half of their income to us. Right? But that's is the issue. That means Chinese people is risk averse. So I talked to some people. I said, you want the 4%, 100% risk-free. Now it's not 100% risk-free because it's downgraded. The American bond is downgraded from 3.8 to 2.8 uh, almost 